what is going on everybody welcome to another episode of the bird flock podcast we have a super special guest today uh 2014 first team all acc two-time cfl all-star 2021 east division mop and the owner of probably the nastiest hit stick in ncaa history (laughs) it's will stand back ladies and gentlemen Yes, yes. How you doing, man? Right? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, mm-hmm. Very quickly, the the first question I just want to get into it is, is about the hit. I'm sure you spoke about it a thousand mm-hmm. times back in the day, but how often were you getting approached and and recognized when you know that was playing on Sports Center for a month straight? Oh, uh, man, it was crazy. Man. I, you know, going back to that time, you know, back in 2014, UCF, you know such a huge campus at the time it was second in the nation with enrollment of students so you know when that happened on ESPN you know at that time I was in a like in a bar and everything like that I was with a bunch of my buddies old teammates and stuff and we all seen on the big screen and I was like what and then they started just like chanting my name and all type of stuff <laughs> that feeling after that like I felt like a star on campus truthfully sure speaking, you know sure. and um, it kind of just went on from there Mm-hmm. And uh, I was thankful for everything that, uh, you know, all the love and all the, the, the good times I did have at UCF. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, that was that was a great time thinking about, <laughs> it. you yeah. know, it was it was a really good time. Sure. And I know I know that was a few years before your actual draft year, I think. But mm-hmm. did that hit like get you any interest from NFL teams or put you on any radars to your knowledge? Well, not really, because, you know, I'm not sure if you guys know, I got in trouble and everything. Yeah. When I did go to Division Two, mm-hmm. the NFL was trying to say that I didn't play against any competition and I that I didn't play against anybody. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really like my draft stock wasn't really high and everything like that. But mm-hmm. teams were aware of my past situation that happened, me failing multiple drug tests. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to use that against me at first and everything, but it was just majority of them just continuously saying that I didn't play against anybody. Right. And then when I went to Green Bay, you know, I felt like I had a great opportunity. But at that time, you know, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Devontae, uh, Devontae Mays, they, mm-hmm. Khalif Phillips, you know, well, not Khalif Phillips. He didn't get drafted, but those three guys got drafted. And, you know, I had no opportunity at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to beat out those three guys. No, it's not going to happen. They already got paid. So I'm just, you know, a practice dummy. Right. But, yeah, you, you probably got drafted into – what was the best running back class for any team any year ever? It was just the, the worst luck possible. Exactly. But, um, yeah. I mean, at, at one point, at what point then, obviously you, you said your draft stock was kind of tanking whatever, because of the personal reasons and whatnot. But mm-hmm. at what point were you kind of introduced to the CFL and like that was presented as an option? Um, It was right after I did my rookie mini camp with the Seattle Seahawks mm-hmm. in uh, 2017 um after I did it with them you know I I was just thinking about like what am I going to do and then my agent was still trying to search around and everything at first I was on Calgary's uh neg list and they ended up dropping me and then Montreal picked me up my agent was talking to me saying hey you know my man Kavis Reed you know we can can get you on a team and get you in a uh, training camp and I'm like what team is it he was like oh it's the Montreal Alouettes I was like, oh, the CFL, I remember that team. Like, and I remember watching it back in the day in like high mm-hmm. school when I when I seen Chad Ochocinco like yeah. really play. I swear yeah. to God, I seen it. So I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Okay, that's the same team. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I just went and then, you know, it was just like that was just where it started. You know, I started yeah, on special history. teams trying to do my thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh how long kind of you know you were with Green Bay? Uh, and coming to Montreal, how long did it kind of take you to adjust to the difference in the game? Uh, Yo, it, it really didn't. It's not it as much running, right? Like as a, it's more of a passing league and there's more people on the field and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a little different. Um, Just some of the rules and stuff like that that I was like caught off guard with my rookie okay. year. But for the most part, I think that I just wanted to play so bad that like all, like learning the game, learning how as many people on the uh, – field it is where the field goal post was how wide how long the field was that didn't matter to me so like me just getting on the field just playing football I was just wanting to play and then as I kept going throughout my years I started to learn the game now 
You know what I mean? So it wasn't hard for me to adjust at all because I, at that time in my life, I was like just fiending to play. You know, I kept getting cut. I kept felt I was getting cut everywhere I went. Green Bay, uh, Seattle. Before that, before even Green Bay, I had workouts with the Giants to just, you know, local days and stuff like that. So everywhere I was going, I'm like, I'm starting to feel like I'm discouraged. I have I don't have the ability to play in the NFL. So when I got to the CFL, I'm like, man, I'm not getting cut from here. And it's crazy because I almost got cut from Al West too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first preseason game against Ottawa. Um, I remember I was late to come in the game on kick return and oh. I was off returner and everyone was screaming, stand back, stand back, stand back, where are you? So I ran on the field and then as I'm running across, um now I get on the field, you know, just to line up, obviously, just to get set. And then when I run across, I had to go get number one and I literally just threw my body at him and boom. Next thing I remember, I was on the sideline. So I had a concussion and I couldn't play in the second preseason game. So I had no film. But um, a lady named Sue and Cavis basically was saying, no, we're not going to cut him. We're going to still give him a chance and everything. And that's how I ended up just being on special teams to start my career. I mean, it didn't really take you that long to to come back anyways. Uh, Yeah. Like when you came in, I believe Tyrell Sutton was the running back, right? Yes. How much did he help you and kind of did you learn from him in in that running back room while he was there? He was like at the top of his game when you kind of came in, right? Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot, you know, and he um, really gave me the opportunity to just see the game differently. Because, you know, he came from the NFL and then he was in the CFL and he did his thing. And he told me like – just slow the game down and just understand that, yeah, it's one extra player, but you are that extra player. You know what I'm saying? And then he taught me a lot about moving pre-snap. And I feel like I implement that into my game a lot, you know, to try to throw the defense off and everything like that. But, uh, you know, Suddy was a good dude, man. He looked out for me, you know. Um, it, was, it just sucked that the way that it happened and how it looked and all that because I really wanted to play, to continue to play with him. And I felt like because – you know, Bo Duke at our, that time, our coach, together, we he wanted to use both of us, you know, two American backs. And I wanted to play along with him. But, you know, he ended up getting hurt and all that. But besides that, you know, Suddy, you know, he's my coach now. So, I'm, you know, I'm pumped up, you know. And it's crazy <laughs> because we united again. And I feel like we're going to do some damage this year. For sure. And now, obviously, he's a, he's a free agent. So we don't know what's particularly going on. But do you get that same vibe for you and Fletch a little bit? That you want to be oh. that 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 duo back in the league, like yeah, yeah, for sure, you know. And uh, same thing with like Jess Run as yeah. well, because you know he's been with us since uh, 2019, mm-hmm. and he's known the team. And like you know, Jess Run's a really really smart guy. Yeah, you know, there's sometimes when like I'll be like lost a little bit, and he can get me back on track. Me being a veteran, I am like mm-hmm. you know sometimes we have you know mess ups and hiccups and all that. So you know, Jess Run also. Is someone that I feel like that's why to me, I think it could have been the three headed monster going this year. Sure. But you know, it just has to make sense for Fletch. You know, he's not under contract, he's a free agent, mm-hmm. and you know, he's going to make the right decision for himself and for his future. Mm-hmm. But if you ask me, I would love to play with him again. That's I awesome. Yeah. Man, I know I love watching Fletch play. I was talking to Dawson about it before how much, uh, I would love to see him back. And we kind of talked about it. We posted about it this morning too. Um, when you first came into the league, it was like kind of hard. Like I said, there's not as much running plays uh, mm-hmm. as there was in the NFL and stuff. As a running back, is that frustrating for you to be like, you know, I might only get 10 carries instead of the normal, like 15 to 20? A little bit. Yeah. You know, because my whole life, I feel like I'm an old school running back, you know, and I would love to get the ball. 20 to 25 times a game, you know, and I feel like I have an endurance. I have the body for it. And, you know, that's how I was kind of brought up with football. And, you know, being in this type of league, you just have to learn how to just get out, go catch the ball now, you know. And that's something that I did say last year in the off season that, you know, I'm going to be working on my hands and everything and catching the ball out the backfield. But I ended up getting hurt. But that was something I improved on in the off season with Gino. And, you know, that that's 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 one thing about this league is, you know, it's definitely going to be a passing league. It's going to stay a passing league. But if you can run the ball, if you have a running back, you know, 
you know, I feel like of my caliber, I think you can, you know, use that just as much as you we pass in this league. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what we did with the Alouettes. You know, mm -hmm. we did that the past few years. And, you know, I hope that it stays the same with the new, you know, changes up front. But, you know, I'm going to do my best in any situation. Yeah, so I actually wanted to get into that a little bit. Um, obviously, in December, the Owls hired Jason Moss as the new head coach. Um, have you had the opportunity to sit down with him at all, talk about what his scheme is looking like or what he, you know, kind of wants to implement? No, I haven't spoke to him yet. Um, but I was told by some of the teammates that he's like making his rounds, making phone calls and everything. I don't have his number or anything, mm -hmm. but, um, I was told that he's making his rounds and he's calling a bunch of guys and everything. So I'm just waiting, you know, for the phone call or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to meet him. I heard a lot, you know, a lot of good things as well. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things, you know, people going to say their bad things or whatever, but mm -hmm. I'm not judging anybody from past situations because we all been there before and, you know, we move forward. 100%. And uh, even without meeting him, what, uh, do you have any expectations coming up from th this year? Not only just for yourself or for the team as well. Um, well, I've heard that, um, you know, he passes a lot. So I'm just going to just make sure that when the ball is thrown to me, that I continue to gain trust and that, you know, plays open up for me to be out there, you know, instead of just running the ball. If this is what we're going to do, I just got to be versatile. And uh, we kind of saw you you uh, talk about uh, you being an old school running back. You mm -hmm. ended up getting that chance again to go back to the NFL uh, with Vegas. And do you think that's what really, like, put you on people's radar is you being able to to carry the workload and being that type of running back? Yeah, definitely. And um, I feel like that showed, well, what I've done so far in the CFL, you know, it kind of reflected on the other running backs as well. And, you know, we're, we're getting a little bit more shine. And I mean, when I say shine is we're getting the ball a lot more. You see other running backs from teams, you know, getting 18, you know, carries a game and stuff like that. So I think that, it shows that how good of running backs are, how good running backs are in this league as well. You know, just because the field is wider and longer and we throw the ball a lot more up, up north, but we can still get the job done on the ground. Now, t I want to talk a little bit more on Vegas. Like before we we started recording, you and I were talking and saying mm -hmm. after your rookie year, you you ended up staying in Montreal in the off season, made it your home, right? Um, yeah. Was obviously going to the NFL is, is your absolute dream, but was there, you know, was it a little bit tough leaving Montreal after those two or three great years that you had to go pursue that chance? Or was it just tunnel vision? This is my dream. Like I'm, I'm ready to go grab it. Um, if I feel like if I didn't have a second year, like if I just went straight after 2018 or something like that, and if somebody gave me a shot, I probably would have been like, all right, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I built so many bonds with people, people that retired and I still talk to. Um, you know, coaches that out coached me that I've been, you know, cool with ever since, you know, those years. But I think, yeah, it, I, it was a little hard, but I knew that it was something that I always like, you know, promised to myself that, you know, I, I'm gonna make it here, you know. And, you know, it did suck that I didn't stay, you know. I really I think it's ridiculous that I didn't even get an opportunity to play in one game to you know. So so what was so you were there over the summer with that with uh with Vegas or what what was that time frame like? Yes, it was um it was the summer of 2020 and um they uh we we, we was doing a lot of Zoom meetings because of the COVID, but then when we finally was able to like get back together as a team and uh practice, but we were wearing uh the mask while we were practicing as well. That kind of sucked. That was terrible. Couldn't breathe at all and it was hot yeah. out there. But um we we worked out. We um had a lot of padded practices, and then we had two scrimmages. And then after the second scrimmage, because we didn't have any preseason games, mm -hmm. so they did a lot of scrimmages. So we did two big scrimmages, and the second scrimmage they started making cuts. And at that time, before that, well, before about a month before, um, my parents had passed in July. So in um August, that's when I was released when I came back because I was gone for 10 days after my mother had passed. Mm -hmm. So I missed um, 10 days of training camp. Mm -hmm. And then at that time they brought in um, Jeremy Hill 
for like my replacement for mm -hmm. the meantime I was gone. When I came back, I ended up beating him out. But when we had the, the scrimmage, they cut me as well. And then they didn't have any excuse or anything like that about why they were cutting me. They just said that they didn't have any time to evaluate. And I didn't understand because the whole time I was there during the practices and the scrimmages, I, I was doing my thing. You For know sure. what I mean? Picking up on my protections, doing the right thing, making the right cuts, hitting the right holes. And even the players, Josh Jacobs, all these guys, Jalen Rashard, they was telling me, they was like, oh, keep it up, man. You, you know, you're going to make this team. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going. The only reason in my head is because I left. Right. And they thought I wasn't going to be able to, like, mentally, you know, withstand playing in the NFL mm -hmm. with, you know, my parents passing. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. But, yeah. After after all that like situation, uh, did did you guys reach out to other teams and uh, you know did other uh, were you in conversation with other teams after that Vegas let let you go or was it kind of no like, we waited I'm going a back to bit. Montreal and let let's go. Well, we waited a little bit. Um, we were trying to reach out to teams and everything, but nobody was you know picking up the phone really to you know just say all right yeah let's bring them in. Um, when my parents passed. Kahari and Balduk, they all called me and, you know, send their condolences and everything like that. And Kahari told me that he said, you know, you always have a home back here in Montreal if you want to come back. So you just let me know. And I said, all right, definitely. Back in my head, I'm like, man, I'm going back to Montreal if no one answers. Mm -hmm. And like a couple of days go by, a couple of days go by. I'm like, I'm not about to sit at home. You know what I mean? But I ended up sitting at home because we had the COVID season. It was no season. So... Mm -hmm. COVID uh, year, my bad. Yeah. But, you know, that I was ready to come back to Montreal after that. And I was like, I'm sticking it here. I'm going to stay here for a while. Now, like, uh, there's the obvious differences between the CFL and the NFL game. But mm -hmm. do, do you think, like, the, the NFL just treats you more as a number than a, a player? In, in that case, compared to the CFL, is there more of a bond with, you, with your coaches, I guess we could say, in the CFL? Mm, well, I'll probably, I, I really can't say that mm -hmm. because I haven't made it far enough in the NFL like I did in the CFL to right. really build a relationship with a coach like mm -hmm. that. You know, I was only there for a short period of time. So I would definitely feel like, you know, the CFL is more of a, a league where you can build a bond because I, you know, I've been here for a while and I've established myself. I feel like if I did establish myself in the NFL, I probably would have, you know, had the same type of relationships and bonds with yeah. players and coaches. Mm -hmm. Because right now, I don't even speak to anybody that, you know, I, I even was in training camp with or that I was a part of the same team with that's in the NFL. Like, I have no friends in the NFL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Swear. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I would say the CFL is, you know, better for me. Mm -hmm. So are you, uh, is that you officially shutting the door on the NFL or what? I mean, no, I wouldn't <laughs> shut the door on them, but they shut the door on me a long time ago, I feel, because I'm 28 years old now, you know, and I, I, I tell this to a lot of people that I really didn't play that many years of professional ball to where I have the wear and tear on my body. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm 28 years old, I don't feel 28. Yes, I had an injury last year, but I bounced right back. I could, I could have sat out if I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. They told me, they said, you have two choices. You you sit out, you can go home, you can travel, whatever you want to do. Or you can try to rehab fast enough to where you can come back for the playoffs. Back in my mind, I'm like, this team is going to the playoffs. We we going to do it. So that's why like, I worked my butt off to get back in time to at least get a couple regular season games in before we got into the playoffs. You know, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't shut the door in the NFL, though. I, don't, I wouldn't. If they if they hit me up, I would. I would think about it at least, you know, mm -hmm. but it, you know, it'll have to be something guaranteed, yeah. you know, like really guaranteed this time because I don't mm -hmm. want to waste my time and then get hurt again, mm -hmm. you know. But come on, you, they, they was killing me like not even a year in the NFL, didn't even get a chance yeah. to like run the ball really, you know, but it's okay. And then jump, jumping forward now. Um, obviously last year was not, not quite a write-off for you. You did get in near the end of the year in the playoffs, but, uh, how's the ankle feeling now? And, uh, are, are we ready to go back a hundred percent for, for 2023? 
Oh, yeah, I feel great. You know, honestly, I wouldn't say I'm 100. I'm about 97 right now. Okay. You know, because I worked out today, I did legs. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I feel really good. I'm excited about this season. I'm ready to get it going. You know, it's just a lot of things that we have to get done, you know, here as an organization mm-hmm. that I'm praying for. You know, it goes in the right way in our favor, you know, so we can succeed this year and really get the job done, you know. Um, but, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Uh, and a lot of fans don't really know, uh, but your training camp is, like, kind of weird in the CFL. Like, you guys – don't really you guys go to like Saint Laurent, uh Saint Leonard, right? You mm-hmm. in the backfield. Um do you feel like uh like the media attention that you guys get when you're at Saint Leonard? Like I always see me personally, there's way more attention for your training camp than there is like your normal practices. Like do you, would you say that's like a fair assessment in that? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a lot more people uh training camps and everything than a practice. I'm not sure if it's that they don't let that many people come to the practice facility we may not be able to go to the practice field but you know it, it is a little different you know and we go on a tour every year i believe again oh, as man. what's speculating you know in the <clears> air right <throat> now. um i mean it was a good place where we was but it's just a traveling part you know that's the only thing mm-hmm. you know the, the walking pretty far you know it kind of you know kind of takes away from everything Mm-hmm. I just wish that, you know, everything was just like right, you know, right there and close to one another. Amazing. And then for us, kind of kind of jumping back now, one of the mm-hmm. highlights for us, at least uh, in 2022, was how he, the Owls owner, Gary Stern, kind of learned how to tweet, I guess. I don't know if he didn't know how to tweet before, but uh, mm-hmm. started taking over Twitter a little bit and being very active and just being an advocate for the CFL game. And mm-hmm. that's that's what we're trying to do too, right? We, we were talking about it before we started rolling. That there needs to be more of of these podcasts, of radio mm-hmm. shows, of videos, or whatever it is, just to bring the attention to the game. Yeah. How do you feel about an owner that's that's that involved and kind of borderline taking like a Mark Cuban approach to uh to be yeah. like hyper involved with the fans and the city and yeah, exactly what you're saying, man. It, it does it does get the people out there who don't know the game, you know, it brings a little bit more awareness to them and like how this game is played and like the things that we we go through too as a league. And um I think, you know, it's great having him. You know, um he was wearing my he's wearing he was wearing my jersey. I think yeah. this picture right now, you know. Yeah. He was supporting me when I was hurt. So, you know, he I'm on I feel like I'm I'm great on his on his great side and when he's on my good side. So yeah. You know, I appreciate him, you know, and I, I do see some of his tweets from time to time. I'm not really active on Twitter too much, mm-hmm. but um, I do see some of his tweets and, you know, some people come at him all crazy. And everything. Oh, crazy. They come at him crazy. <laughs> I, I do. I, I see. But, you know, he's, he's a good guy, you know, mm-hmm. and he means well and he, he speaks the truth, you know. So, you know, everything's good with me and him. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's good, yeah. Um, do you think that's like kind of putting my, the Alouettes more on the map uh, in a way when like people outside of Quebec are gonna see, uh, you know, the, their owner trying, you know, back up their players. Like this guy's shouting out TSN guys when they're saying that you guys aren't gonna win, right? This guy's yeah. gonna, I think that's gonna make the Alouettes bigger and and get more fans for the CFL and for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I do think so. You know, and him like doing that and having an interaction with fans and critics on Twitter, you know, it, like I said, it gets the people going. And then, you know, it, it'll piss people off when we do actually win, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, like I said, like, it bring more fans and they'll see, like, the entertainment that we do have. And they'll see, like, this game is unique. So, yeah, having Gary Stern, he, he, he doing his thing. <laughs> I, yeah. That's why I don't say nothing. I let him rock, you know. I, <laughs> and then yeah, he tells we could call him at any time. So, you know, you know he's yeah. somebody – all you can talk to as well so Mm -hmm. he's not someone that you just can never get in touch with and that's that's a great thing about that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now kind of wrapping up here a little bit and looking forward to next year or or this year I guess we could say like you said there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of things that need to be done within the organization Um, without like naming names or getting too specific what what would you say this offseason at least are the three keys to set you guys up for 
great success this year and what you know all the fans want to see and that's a great cup man we gotta get our boys back man yeah. we gotta get our guys back and that's just being completely honest man yeah. we gotta do something to where everyone is happy you know and it has to make sense you know we you know this this city not only does the organization and the players and teammates but the city, the fans, they all want Gino back. I want yeah. Gino back. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we want our quarterback back, Trev. Mm -hmm. That's two right there. I can tell you, to be honest with you, like, and if it, it offends anybody or anything like that, I don't mean that in any type of way. Mm -hmm. But if we want to get another shot at a great cup, we have to re retrieve the players that we had this past season mm -hmm. and really get the job done this time because we're bringing back key players on defense and, it, and it's looking really good, but we just have to make the right decision on offense because it's going to be tough for us if we don't at least get one. Mm -hmm. And that's just being 100% honest from Will stand back. Like, yeah, I love <laughs> it. Tough. I mean, looking at the receivers alone, I think the only off the top of my head, the only receiver I can think of on contract right now is Phil Pot. Right, Gino is a free agent. Jake's a free agent. Reggie's Julian's a free agent. a free agent. Everyone's a free agent. Yeah. So I, I won't even make you list reason two and three because I think getting your boys back is all yeah. the top three That's reasons enough, you yeah. need. But no, I yeah. love that. And, and uh, you, like you brought up, Trevor, uh, is that, have you heard? I feel like all the attention, media attention has been about Gino and bringing him back. I haven't even heard anything about Trevor Harris coming back. Hey, he posted. Hey, he, he posted a sponsored ad this morning. So you got you got a little bread. He posted a little ad this morning, but exactly. that's the last I heard of him. Have you heard from him? What's uh, what's happening on uh, that situation? Everything about it, I haven't either. And you know, free agency is what next week. The fourteenth. This yeah. week. The fourteenth. So, so, yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah. So oh, man, and I haven't heard from Trev. So you know, I I don't know. You know, I'm I'm just as lost as everyone else is, mm -hmm. and you know that sometimes that's how that's how it has to be, and hey, you know well, whatever happens, you know I'm gonna make sure I do whatever I can do to help this team in any way to continue to win games and win them back to back and keep it going and at least win the East. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, I love that. I think we could just about wrap it up here, but I want to ask you one last question before we jump off and it's a little bit of trivia for will standback uh -oh. it's a game we call name that price where we're going to give you an item and you have to guess the exact price of it okay, okay. <laughs> that item i tweeted at gary stern about this okay william standback i need you to guess how much does a hot dog at a montreal alouettes game cost a hot dog can they in canadian dollars a hot dog. One hot dog. One. Keep in mind, one. Like you're not getting one. like chips or nothing with it. It's just the hot dog. It's it's three seventy five. It's seven dollars and fifty cents. Oh my god! I was trying <laughs> to give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh my god! I'm thinking that's back at home hot dog real quick. Oh my gosh! I never realized that. Yeah. It's yeah. Seven. Oh man. They call it a jumbo hot dog. I'm a big dude. I think it's it's pretty average. But yeah. uh yeah, seven dollars and fifty cents. And they bring them down during halftime too, sir. They bring them they bring like a whole like, oh yeah bucket down for us. Uh it's not really us, it's the it's the staff and everything yeah. during halftime. Yeah. But then when I was hurt, I was eating some of them. <laughs> Yeah, I just snitched on myself. Yeah, yeah you saw that. You saw the seven dollars taken that. out of your game checks every time. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, hey, we cannot thank you enough for taking the time to do this today. It was amazing. Yeah, um, sure. Obviously, go follow our boy Will on. I think you said you're most active on Instagram. Go follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. And, uh, okay. We're gonna have great. a great year this year. Can't wait to see you back out there. Definitely. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, man. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate you for coming on and uh, talking to us today, man. Always, anytime, you know. I love doing stuff like this. You know, this is this is what I do, you know. Love it. I, I might do a little – might have a podcast after football. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh. I just got to get more comfortable with it. I don't want – you know what I'm saying? Hey, you just, were great today. You were great yeah, today. You, I mean, like, when I'm going to start asking questions and stuff uh, like that and how to do it and everything yeah. like that. 
I just got to, you know, have some more practice with that part. There you go. There you go. Hey, mm-hmm. we'll be your first subscribers for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs>